This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to answer the question, will CBDCs destroy Bitcoin? We all know that CBDCs are coming. This is a form of programmable government money, central bank digital currencies. That's what CBDCs stands for. And the way you could program this would be you could allow, for example, the purchase of carrots, but you couldn't buy cigarettes with it. And the question that people have been asking me is, won't this destroy Bitcoin since CBDCs can be programmed to not allow you to buy Bitcoin with it? Now, it's important to realize that CBDCs are not exactly like the digital dollars that we have today. These days, most dollars are digital. They're not actually coins or cash. But CBDCs, and, and for example, US dollar CBDC, or central bank digital currency, will be different because it will also be digital. It will not be physical, but it will run on a centralized blockchain. So CBDC is just like any other government issued fiat money, but it, but it has this, this quality that it runs on a blockchain. And this blockchain is controlled by a centralized authority, which in almost all cases will be the central bank, hence the name central bank digital currency. So a US dollar CBDC would be run by the Fed probably with some input from the U.S. Treasury as well. Now, CBDCs are actually terrible, terrible things. I call them spy coins or surveillance coins. When these come out, central, bank and, central banks and governments will be able to track what kind of things you buy with your money. And for example, they might say, uh-oh, you just bought a red hat or you bought some ammo or you bought a copy of this sovereign individual. You're going to lose 50 points from your social credit score. You can tell the kind of countries that have a head start on CBDCs are countries like China, which of course want to use that as part of their greater surveillance apparatus. But make no mistake, CBDCs are coming to the US as well. Powell has already talked to Congress about it and there have been a lot of rumblings. That being said, this is a, a fairly technical development or it's a new technology that's going to need to be developed. And the US government currently has trouble building things like websites as we saw in the last few years. So I think it's gonna take a little bit of time for this to develop, which gives us time to prepare, which is a really good thing. Because as I said, CBDCs are the worst of all worlds. Like regular US dollars, a, a CBDC US dollar is not gonna retain its purchasing power over time. So it's gonna be a terrible store of value. For example, the US dollar has lost something like 9% in terms of its purchasing power over the past 12 months. That's what the inflation rate has been, and CBDCs are gonna be no different from that. They're also gonna be a privacy nightmare, as we already talked about. They can be used to actually turn off your money or deactivate your money if someone at the central bank or government doesn't like you or doesn't like your political views. So you get paid in CBDCs by your employer. Everyone knows that those are your US dollars. The Fed knows, the government knows, the FBI knows, the CIA knows, the IRS knows. And they can use that to track your spending and also to turn off your dollars if they want to. This can also be used to automatically tax people. So you could do, uh, you could change the tax code such that if you live in this zip code, you pay 5% to the government on every purchase, or maybe you pay 5% to the government on every purchase if you buy something that the current federal government doesn't like. If you live in another zip code, maybe you pay 15%. So it can really be used for discrimination as well. It could also be used for sort of targeted stimmy checks, CBD stimmy checks, where, where there's an expiration date on the money. You need to spend the money in a certain amount of time. Maybe you have to spend it within 10 days of receiving it at a government approved store. You can't just spend it anywhere or the money will turn off and disappear. So this is a pretty cool technology. You can imagine authoritarians of all stripes would love to have this tool at their disposal. So what about Bitcoin and CBDCs? It's important to realize that governments that are trying to inflate their way out of all their debt problems, they don't want you to have an escape valve. We've seen this with traditional fiat currencies. For example, various South American and African countries often try to stop people converting their local currency to US dollars because this amounts to a capital outflow and it weakens the domestic currency. So Argentina uh, tried to do this obviously with the dollar. And I think something similar could happen with Bitcoin because Bitcoin is an escape valve for, from pe for people from the fiat system in the same way that US dollars 
are an escape valve for Argentinians, a way of escaping the devaluation of their own currency. Because the U.S. dollar is being devalued, it's going down over time, it's losing purchasing power. But a lot of things like the Argentinian dollar or the Argentinian peso or the Zimbabwe dollar obviously are losing value faster. So what would happen if you could not buy Bitcoin with your CBDC and this was forbidden? And let's assume also that almost every country in the world has a CBDC. Doesn't this mean that Bitcoin will die or at least stop growing because there won't be this, this flow of value into it out of fiat? I don't think so. And I'll give you a couple of reasons for that. The first reason is, first of all, not every country will ban Bitcoin purchases. There are a lot of countries in the world there are a lot of different kinds of people in those countries, different kinds of leaders. We saw what's happened with Bukele in El Salvador. And so there's a very good chance that there will still remain countries that are friendly to Bitcoin and friendly to Bitcoiners. These will probably be smaller, company, smaller countries like El Salvador, maybe Singapore, places like this. As a result, they'll see a huge influx of capital in the form of Bitcoin and other capital inflows, as well as they'll see an influx of intelligent, productive people because this is what long-term Bitcoiners tend to be and this is what the money incentivizes. It incentivizes saving. It doesn't incentivize mindless consumption as fiat dollars do. So a lot of countries will in fact ban Bitcoin, but banning Bitcoin is very similar. As I've said many times, it's similar to banning the internet. It's similar, similar to banning cars or airplanes or other tech innovations. If you do this sort of thing, you might end up looking more like North Korea or the former U Soviet Union, or even China with its great internet firewall. So let's take a, a page from history. I've talked about Executive Order 6102 many times. This was when U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt forbade the personal holding of gold. You can maybe have a little gold jewelry, but you were not, you were not allowed to, to store any significant amount of gold. And if you had gold in the U.S. banks at that point, it was confiscated you were paid something like $20 per ounce, and then it was revalued to $35 per ounce. So this was complete theft. This is how the gold ended up in Fort Knox, assuming the gold is still there. So what would you have done as a, th as a sort of historical thought experiment here? If you knew that gold was about to be banned in the U.S. in 1933, I think actually the smart thing was not to try to exit gold. It was definitely a smart idea to withdraw the gold from the bank so it could not be confiscated in the way it was. And uh, in this way, gold bugs understand this as well as Bitcoiners do, not your keys, not your coins, not your vault, not your gold. But I still think that the smart thing to do was to hold on to your gold or to buy more gold if you had known that this executive order was coming. And the reason for this is gold only gets banned as an exit valve or escape valve because the local currency is about to be massively devalued and the government is trying to close all of the exit doors. So it's still the rational thing to buy gold and hold it even though it was illegal. And obviously the country, the US is a very big place. A lot of people did in fact do this, assuming they, they didn't leave their gold quote unquote on the exchange as people leave their Bitcoin on the exchange, assuming they withdrew their gold before this executive order was issued. So if you believe that CBDCs are coming, this should tell you something. This should tell you that the US dollar is about to be even more devalued. And it should also tell you that it might make sense to load up on some Bitcoin while it is still relatively cheap, while people don't have CBDCs on their mind, and also why it's, while it's still relatively easy to get some Bitcoin. So what happens when CBDCs are finally here? If CBDCs cannot be converted into Bitcoin, whether it's a CBDC Euro, CBDC Yen, or CBDC Dollar, if they cannot be converted into Bitcoin simply because there's code in there that does not allow you to use them to purchase uh, Bitcoin, for example, from Coinbase or Gemini or one of these exchanges, is this the end of capital flows into Bitcoin? No, I don't think it is, because I think at this point, people will really realize how Bitcoin is a store of value and a place to hide outside of the financial system as we've been talking about for the past couple of days. And there's a very easy trick to get your money into Bitcoin and out of a CBDC. And this is something similar to what people do to get their money into dollars in various developing countries. So what you do is a government cannot prevent you from spending your CBDC 
on a regular household item, for example, that, that everyone could be expected to need, maybe a lawnmower, some soap, some clothes. You can really name it any, any object uh, that you want. So let's say you take your CBDCs and you buy a new lawnmower with it or a whole pile of uh, bars of soap. And then what you do is you take the, that lawnmower or that bar, those bars of soap and you sell them to someone else in exchange for Bitcoin. So the path is basically CBDC, you use that to buy physical stuff, and then you trade that physical stuff for Bitcoin. And there will be Bitcoiners who have a lot of Bitcoin. They're happy to buy things like lawnmowers and soap with their Bitcoin at a, at a certain point. People, as I said, people do something similar all the time in developing countries to get their hands on US dollars. It's, it's a little bit like water. If you pour water, it will make its way through the cracks. It will make its way through the path of least resistance. And human beings are very smart. If they want to get their hands on US dollars or they want to get their hands on Bitcoin, they will make a number of trades in order to get there, especially when they're highly incentivized to. Right now, they're not really incentivized to, and a lot of people don't realize that this is one of Bitcoin's real strengths. The other way you could do it is just through sort of a Bitcoin circular economy or Bitcoin black market, where you sell your own goods and services and or labor directly in exchange for Bitcoin. And CBDCs will be this whole parallel system from Bitcoin. If you want to buy and sell using Bitcoin, no one will be able to stop you simply because Bitcoin is peer-to-peer -peer money. It doesn't require the permission from the government or from banks or from corporations to use it. You just have a self-hosted wallet. You can send Bitcoin anywhere you want and you should be running your own node as well at this point. Can the government stop you from doing this, stop you from moving your CBDCs into physical stuff and then buying Bitcoin with it? If you have a huge surveillance state, they certainly could do that. They could follow you around. They could spy on you. So the government could certainly stop 100 people from doing this. But the more people who do this, it certainly could not stop 100 million people from doing this. And this is the whole point of Bitcoin. It's very difficult to take someone's Bitcoin, but of course you can. You can put a weapon to their head and ask them to give you their Bitcoin. And a lot of people will do this, but it's very difficult to do that to tens of millions of people or hundreds of millions of people. And that's why it's a robust, anti-fragile currency. That's one of the reasons. So in this, in this sort of dystopian future we're talking about, it's going to be quite easy for those who know how to use Bitcoin to evade government restrictions. And it gets, it's important, as I spoke about on Saturday, we're not talking about benign government restrictions here, like not allowing you to drive your car 100 miles per hour on city streets while completely wasted. We're not talking about that sort of thing. We're talking about hostile governments that care nothing for the health, safety, well-being of their citizens and or residents. These are hostile governments of the present or of the future that want to lock you up in the matrix in the digital prison and harvest your life energy and steal the fruits of your labor through inflation. And I think the, the Matrix movies were a very good metaphor of this stealing the life force of people by putting them in these pods. This is really how inflation works because you spend your life force, your energy, your time earning money, and then the government picks your money, the, cent the central bank picks your pocket uh, through devaluing the currency by printing too much of it. So it's a hidden tax. It's a hidden form of theft. It's interesting. There's still so many people in developed countries like the US. You see them in my comments section all the time saying Bitcoin is useless. What's it good for? It's not good for anything. Therefore, it should be valued at zero because it's useless and worthless. These people at the same time, they say like a CBDC is coming. They don't see the contradiction here. When CBDCs are actually here, though, they will be the best ad in the world for why you need Bitcoin. Smart people are going to buy Bitcoin before CBDCs arrive. Once CBDCs are here, everyone's going to realize that if they want to transact outside the existing system, it's going to be very important to have some Bitcoin. Now, we could see a more utopian future where the U.S. actually does move to a Bitcoin standard. I think there's a small possibility of that, maybe a 10% chance, but I think there's a 90% chance we get this sort of digital prison, this sort of uh, digital life and money lockdown. And in the meantime, though, we, sh we should do everything we can to try to fight against this dystopian future, to fight against this digital prison that's coming, tell people about CBDCs, and don't allow the media, don't allow the elites and the politicians to tell us that CBT CBDCs are this wonderful tech innovation because they are subject to such abuse that you can be certain they will be used in these abusive 
uh, and controlling ways. It's very important to learn to use privacy tech like Bitcoin before it is too late. You should learn from Executive Order 6102. These sort of actions can happen anywhere. They can even happen in the U.S. The other thing to remember is when, the, when gold was banned in the U.S., the price of it went up, not down. And so something similar certainly could happen with Bitcoin. If something is widely desired, a lot of people want it, and it's made illegal, the fiat price of it goes up, not down. This is what happened with marijuana when it was banned around the same time as gold. And this is what happens to Bitcoin as well in countries who ban it. Because when you ban something, you're really signaling to your citizens that it is something that's a threat to the government that's very valuable. And as a result, the free market, maybe it's the, 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 uh, the black market, prices it accordingly. And so if we were to see a ban, a U.S. ban of Bitcoin, you would expect the price of Bitcoin uh, to go up in this sort of context. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.